Without further ado, let's see who will win the winner of the first round in YCS Sudrek 2022. And here they are, ready with the headsets on. Again, another usual theme is that some of uh, our duelists are more accustomed to the playing on stream, some are less. We know Ryan has been playing even just when we saw him losing to Alter guys recently. But, I mean, uh, Martin uh, might actually feel the pressure. Yeah, so. yeah. playing uh, on, the, on the stage round one, could always be not easy, but Ryan starts things off here with uh, the first runic cards we see during this weekend. Absolutely, which, which is should the freezing be. curses. Yeah. Because, of course, so runic cards, I mean, most of you guys will be uh, learning more and more about uh, this theme throughout the weekend, but essentially the idea is uh, they're all quick spells, uh, so first things off, that's always a great sign, and they have two effects. The main cost is keeping your next battle phase, which makes things actually quite interesting because we saw in Sprite how good of a card uh, Zeus can be. But ooh, we actually see an early uh, pretty bad start from Ryan who gets shot down by Infinite Impermanence. And here we see the first Adam Emancipator card. So actually Ryan uh, not happy with his opening. Yeah, especially because like Ryan played uh, remote duels over the last two years and I think uh, he might be having nightmares now. Absolutely, <laughs> that deck was absolutely crushing it at this event. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will see the first cards. On the other hand, Adam Emancipator Analyzer will be able to just excavate the top five cards of your deck. And then you pick a rock monster from there. It's probably the Kwaki. So. And once again, I think it's also interesting uh, to talk about how many decks still are being played. Uh, like we have seen uh, multiple different decks at the European Championship Absolutely. and still now. And this is a great pick. Uh, so this is the Kwakimeiru Supplier. When it's special summon, you basically just uh, add uh, one of the cards that mentions it. So he's going to get one of these other Kwakimeirus, which is pretty much the one that stops monster effects, which is the Guardian. So. Honestly, not what we expected going into this round one, but I'm not complaining, honestly. So, great uh, showing off uh, from Martin. And Antrop, and like in this case, Infinite Impermanence, uh, show these cards. Uh, we have seen two different directions. So, some players are using like 12, even more. Some players are just cutting them yeah. completely, so very interesting uh, line. What do you think? Would you have been... Uh, I mean, you're, are you a fan of hand traps during this format? Uh, it really depends on the matchups, but uh, I think uh, when you're playing uh, runic cards, you draw a lot of cards even during your opponent that, uh, uh, turn, so that makes it better, but at the same time, if they're not impactful enough, then uh, honestly, they're not the greatest. But here we see the Dragite and... Uh, I think Ryan is really struggling yeah. here. Probably, I mean, yeah, he's gonna be forced to use his own uh, uh, impermanence, uh, but when you're cut off the sprite engine, this is really, really bad for you. So, yeah, because basically we have seen uh, uh, yeah. sprite players playing, uh, let's say, just the few essentials of sprite monsters in their deck, and then uh -huh. they're allowed, uh, you know, to play at least 15 uh, to 18 uh, runic cards. Ooh, Ooh, and we see actually a yeah, pretty interesting <laughs> touch here. He is playing Sprite Red in his uh, Adam Emancipator deck. And I mean, Seeker is level 2 and now he'll excavate 5. And wow, he gets uh, whew, rewarded pretty heavily. And here we see the Artifact Site, which is pretty much the ending uh, board uh, when uh, uh, he goes first. But in this case, he will just go and pick the other option of available, which was the Crystal. And this way, you will be able to even draw some additional cards. So, uh, I'm worried about Ryan fans at the moment. <laughs> Seems like this game one is going uh, the underdog way. Yeah, because if he doesn't have any other interruption, uh, like infinite impermanence, uh, and yeah, 
he, he can really hurt. It's tough, uh, and now we see even small ward. Okay, interesting. Ooh, but unfortunately, I think he did activate it in the same column, uh, and uh, this can <laughs> be a proof of uh, how tough it can be to play on stream. Uh, unfortunately, but I mean, I don't think he's stopping uh, anytime soon. To be fair, but yeah, uh, good catch uh, from uh, his opponent. Here we see the Raptite. Again, we'll see some excavation from the top of the deck. Wow, too bad about the small world. But we said that. Uh, okay. Okay, so here uh, he's thinking about it. Uh, he will just go for it. Is there a response? Uh, no. So we see the top three cards being banished. Nothing too important. And the effect is, of course. Negated. Oh, he also has the blue. Wow. Whew. What a end. What a start from Martin. Yeah. Yeah. We expected uh, some sprite action from Ryan. Instead, uh, it is Martin who is uh, just going off. Uh, even with the small word uh, mistake, uh, it didn't really matter. Wow. What a start. Interesting deck. Yeah, I'm really liking it because I think this is the first time we see something like this. Yeah. Very unique. Yeah. But uh, it can work out. We we have seen, and we'll probably see later on on uh, our future match, uh, some of these very explosive decks. Of course, you had the chance to interview Herman Hansen. Yeah. The interview is coming up later on, but he is also playing, we can spoil you for you guys, a 60 card deck with a lot of uh, engines. Uh, I mean, it's Herman. Super spicy one. <laughs> Herman, uh, that's what he does. Usually 60 card, uh, you see some uh, <laughs> combos in there and... He's doing this. He's playing desperate elements and just trying to combo off his opponent. I could have picked him up, but uh, otherwise it would have been not a wise choice. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. But now, things for Martin are looking very good because uh, Ryan is left only with uh, one card in his hand. And uh, here, I think we will soon see an Sprite Elf. Yeah, but the problem is, which is also one of the main, if maybe the only issue of the Runic uh, uh, Sprite deck, uh, like Sprite was already considered a little weak at breaking boards, but the best way to do it was Zeus. The problem here is, since you keep the next battle phase, you're cut off Zeus, so when you fall behind, uh, it's really, really tough to come back. Uh, it's more of a deck that sets up really well, and usually when going first or second, he will end up with like six cards in his hand and a decent board. But like in such a spot, it's really tough to come back because, as I mentioned, without Zeus, uh, we know that the sprite deck really struggles. Yeah. And yeah, here we get to see even the gigantic, I think, trying to just go for an OTK maybe. Yeah. Because from, from from what we have seen, basically. Um like most of the players are relying either on the on the uh, Runic engine mm -hmm. or the other one on the Evil Twin, which I really like. Yeah. I'm really fan of They're it. They're also cool. Yeah, especially because you can uh, basically play multiple hand traps, and uh, as you as you mentioned, uh, I think uh, like playing hand traps in this format is uh, still good. And uh, here, Martin is uh, continuing, continuing and explaining. Uh, yeah, his some combos. Of his effects. Uh, just doing some uh, math, uh, and uh, let's see if he will figure out a way to just uh, close this game one uh, as quickly as it gets. Very bad end on uh, yeah. his opponent, uh, and yeah, Ryan didn't see any sprite monsters, and then. Uh, True copies uh, of Runic cards without having any other extender. Yeah, because the problem is once again, like all these Runic cards, when you draw multiples off, but your opponent stops the font, and then uh, if you want to use the special summon effect, you're forced to summon on the extra monster zone, which means that you cannot activate multiples, and that's why Ryan was basically forced to pass his turn. And uh, yeah, that's uh, not an ideal end, but of course, he didn't draw a single sprite card, yep. which is very unlucky on his side and one of the most played card for this weekend was indeed uh, to play against the fountain is the cosmic cyclone yeah
Yeah. Surprisingly, and uh, we will go into more details later on, we do have uh, a list of uh, pretty much the most played cards of the weekend. Uh, and spoiler alert, uh, the number one spot is not Mystic Mine, <laughs> instead it is Cosmic Cyclone, which is quite interesting, with over 82% of our players using the card. Yep. So. Yeah, the strategy has changed quite a bit. We have seen uh, pure sprites being played at European Championship with Mystic yep. Mine, uh, with the beat cop protecting it. Yeah, it makes sense also because of the popularity of runic cards, because yep. uh, most of the time you will use uh, the effect of the card we see on the screen, the Eugen to search fountain, but it actually has a really important second effect, which is uh, uh, pretty much a bail links for Salaman Great, uh, uh, which protects from destruction by banishing itself, which means it cannot be used against Cosmic, but it can be used. Ryan has seen enough uh, and he picks up his card, so surprisingly, it is Martin who takes game one. And uh, this, is, uh, this is definitely, I think, uh, you don't really expect in round one, because basically when you attend an event like this, you yeah. can play, I mean, I think we are. I think yeah. we have at least 20 different decks in this format. Oh yeah, even more than that. But I think Ryan uh, would have never thought about playing against Adam and Sipeter, like. No, absolutely. Because uh, I think when you, as you mentioned, when you walk into such a huge event uh, over uh, uh, 2,100 players, uh, you can expect uh, the unexpected yeah. for sure, and especially in like the first uh, two, three rounds of an event. Uh, uh, that's why usually you really want to win those uh, first rounds, so you're guaranteed to play against the most uh, well-known decks. Uh, but if then you can choose, the, basically there are two lines. You get to play either against those uh, really trap-heavy decks, as I mentioned, Paleozoic, Eldlick, uh, uh, some of these. Uh, but then uh, there are these crazy combo decks, uh, which I think is the other side of the spectrum, which you really don't want to play against. Because yeah. uh, you can find your way and maybe try and stop those uh, slower decks. But if you're not prepared against uh, like a side deck, uh, you're done. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, it's definitely worrying. And I think on the other end, uh, Ryan's deck alongside Tier Element uh, is the deck you should prepare for, working into YCS Utrecht. So I would be surprised if uh, his opponent didn't have a solid side deck for the deck. Yeah. I mean, uh, from what we've seen, uh, uh, like the card also to go for in the side deck should be uh, the Eradicator Virus, yeah. which uh, I think is very impactful. For sure. Uh, like on one hand, uh, I think they are both good, but in different, like in, from different point of view. Like the Evil Twin Sprite, mm -hmm. I think it's consistent on like being like playing multiple hand traps, while Sprite relies more you know, on its speed itself. Um, still, I think that uh, I was super impressed about uh, how good Martin's deck is, because like basically he was for able sure. to put up an incredible field and basically uh, go for game just in his yeah. first turn. The, the, the problem is, of course, Ryan somewhat bricked. He got yeah. stopped by the impermanence, but even so, like he didn't have the best of ends. Uh, so now, uh, when you go first with such a deck, of course, you just try and play your own game, your own tempo, establish the fountain, and uh, maybe we have seen again two different directions with the setup. Uh, before, uh, with Ronin Todin, of course, everyone was going for totally awesome. There are still some brave duelists which are using just maybe two copies of Swap Frog, which is still possible to make the Toad. Otherwise, we have seen Mannequin Cat, which is an interesting one, will be able to. I think show you guys, uh, yeah, because uh, this basically allows you to set up with Mannequin Cat, which is, uh, again, uh, rank 2, it allows you to special summon a lot of different uh, cards from the deck uh, all the way through the end of Anubis, which is something I think we have not seen competitively ever in Yu-Gi-Oh! But regardless, uh, uh, I think uh, our duelists are pretty much ready, so let's see if uh, Ryan will be able to come back uh, and fight for a game 3. Or if Martin will actually just swiftly chew all the previous YCS Utrecht champion. Let's go to the table. And here we are. So 
I mean, I would be surprised if Ryan didn't go first again, uh, so he'll just try his best to set up his combos. I do see some spells. Let's see. Good fist bump. It all comes down to this. Uh, he's thinking about uh, using the runic engine once again, and we see exactly the same opening as the previous game with freezing curses. Uh, let's hope that it goes uh, slightly yep. different this time. And again, he will try to use the Eugen. Yeah, uh, it's going through. He's thinking about it. Uh, And talking about side deck cards for this event, um, what would you be your approach about playing cards such as Dimensional Barrier or I'm thinking about Anti-Spell Fragrance, Solemn Judgment? They're definitely interesting, but the problem is you run multiple copies of you know Cosmic Cyclone, yeah. the Runic Destruction. Uh, and here we see one of the Tetch cards for the weekend, which is the Wind Up Kitten. Of course, uh, a huge throwback, uh, and uh, it's actually really nice because it's a level 2. You can summon it off Gigantic, and uh, it's not once per turn in the way that you can just use it again uh, with the Elf. So it basically is really, really good against tier elements and in some other matchups. So interesting to see the ultimate rare copy no. there from Ryan. But here he's able to set up uh, slightly better. He actually starts things off. Uh, this time with the Sprite card and the Fountain, so uh, solid start. This is what you usually should see from uh, uh, Ryan's deck. And what a card Fountain is. No, I mean, uh, Fountain is like uh, a game changer, for real. Yeah. Uh, I mean... There are a few cards that do this much yeah. uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, just... The first effect uh, would have been considered really good. I'm thinking of like Temple of the Kings uh, for yeah. traps, and uh, it's really, really solid. Uh, but then the fact that it's not actually a hard once per turn. If you play a second copy of Fountain, then you can use uh, the effect to shuffle and draw again. So we have seen uh, some duelists like uh, Marcus Patel actually trying out yesterday at the 3v3 public event uh, a version with like all the runic spells in free off just to turbo through. And uh, that's also an interesting take on the decks. And I also like how Sprite has changed throughout these months, because basically you yep. were uh, going through totally awesome uh, before very easily. Mm -hmm. And now instead, most of the players, as you mentioned, uh, are either playing Swap Frogs or not playing them at all. Absolutely. So basically they prefer not to playing them or playing totally awesome as well in the extra deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like the their line has changed, and uh, it relies more on the runic engine itself. And the uh, yeah, as we are seeing, uh, yeah. Ryan is continuing, and we will soon see. In as yeah, well we will see some draws here. This is uh, the power of the runic deck, and yeah, here we see the fountain, the first fountain of YCS Utrecht, uh, drawing two cards for Ryan and skipping, of course, the next battle phase. But this is a huge setup, you want to pick up uh, any of your traps uh, or engine cards, it's uh, really a good start. Yeah. So, uh, here the interesting thing is, as we mentioned, you could Eradicator, so if you play against the mirror match this spot, uh, you can just go for it, uh, but instead uh, we'll get to see some more action from Ryan, who still didn't normal summon this turn. Yeah. So, great, great stuff. Basically, as you mentioned, since uh, uh, Swap Frog is not that popular this weekend, a line we've seen more and more popular is actually uh, the one involving Sprite Carrot. Yeah. Because it can stop uh, popular cards in the side deck like Evenly Matched. Mm -hmm. But here for now, we'll just uh, get to see the other card. Essentially, this, uh, this event, uh, two interesting cards have been Hyperia. Yeah. And then, as in this case, uh, the card you've seen on the screen, which if used for the XYZ summon of a Dark Master, then you can uh, uh, draw a card. So it's uh, just a, a, a lot of these uh, level 2 monsters uh, that allow you to pick up more and more cards. So here we see a, a really good setup with multiple uh, uh, interruptions, we can say. 
Varayan. And let's see if his opponent will be able to fight back. Uh, yes, to do it through a lot, lot, lot of cards. And we see Lightning Storm being played. Uh, is one of these cards that uh, are still very impactful during this meta game. Yeah, with the Gene Buster yeah. in play, it's essentially another interruption. And the Lightning Storm is actually a it's really huge. good start. Yeah. Uh, we could have expected the Radicator, but instead yeah. that's not the case. And uh, this does hurt uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Because, of course, as you can see here, that's... Uh, it is an interruption, which is really good right now, but basically it was two monster interruptions, which I think was still a solid choice by Ryan, because usually you want to stop the monster effects when you're playing against the uh, Adam Ancipator, so... We really have to see if Martin uh, has uh, any sort of solution, because uh, Ryan studied pretty well. Yeah, and, and here we see again the Researcher. Let's see if he wants to negate maybe with the red... I think he could, because like this is yeah. uh, being normal sum, and then uh, he also has the fountain. No, okay. Ah. He goes for the jet. Interesting. So jet uh, right away. Now again, the decision whether he wants to use his interruptions, and he does. So the yeah. red comes down. But it doesn't destroy it. Yeah, luckily they catch it up because they didn't tribute a link or XYZ rather. So now this uh, sticks uh, and let's see. He goes finally for the researcher. And here comes from the end uh, banishing the top three cards of his deck and essentially using an infinite permanence yeah pretty much then we flip the starter we know of uh, we can get uh, through the carrot for example let's see but definitely the start yeah you would expect yeah. uh, from uh, from Ryan so solid solid Yu-Gi-Oh here from the French player Yeah, this is completely different from game one in which basically he didn't yeah. have anything else. He was really relying on the Hojin and... Uh, so essentially Ryan played around the Dark uh, Ruler no more. Uh, in this case he got punished by the Lightning Storm yeah. if he would have used the starter right away. I feel like Dark Ruler really fell off in popularity this weekend, especially because many players are using uh, the Runic cards. So if you go Dark Ruler and then Runic, you cannot clear the board. So that's uh, why most of these decks are really cutting the card. But uh, now we get to see why Martin is playing sprites. If you play against sprite, which is something we had seen in some tier elements as well. Ooh, another interesting card. Yeah. Basically, what you can do is just uh, even run a few copies, even just uh, one blue, one jet, and one uh, smashers. And then uh, whenever you make dark, uh, you can just uh, take uh, your opponent's sprites and just, uh, you know, push through, but... Yeah, Parallel Exceed is one of another monsters that we have seen uh, during our remote duels. Yeah, uh, for sure. Mostly in Salaman Grey, yeah. <laughs> which is actually the deck uh, Ryan won while he has Sudrecht with, <laughs> but uh, not really as strong as it was back in 2020 today. Still, we're seeing how many powerful plays Martin yeah. Dex has, because uh, he's continuing to extend his combos. And we are pretty much uh, half the way through the round, because, again, as a reminder, we will be playing with 45 minutes this weekend, and uh, a new change, at least uh, here in Europe, and uh, one that I think it's uh, really for the best. Okay, so here we see the last card. We'll get to see two more uh, drawn by Ryan. 
as he flips uh, Runic Flashing Fire, which essentially targets a special summon monster and he destroys. And now, as I mentioned, he gets to draw two. Uh, this is why playing uh, cards like even Nibiru or Ash uh, in uh, uh, Ryan deck makes a lot of sense. But for now, we'll see if he has picked up any. Because the play goes through. Wow, and even Ooh. has uh, uh, the Kwakimeru to push through. So, solid, uh, solid start. Yeah. Because he gets the Kwakimeru, he gets to add another rock to his end. Or rather, in this case, the other Kwakimeru you, you play in the deck. Yeah, he gets the Guardian. Yeah. Wow. Wow, this is very good stuff from Martin. Like, he had a, oh, a very good hand once again. Yeah. And he's milling five from the Raptite. Uh, I think uh, he's really, really pushing the French player up against the wall. Uh, and at the end, this could come down to Ryan uh, not using uh, wow. his... Uh, wow. <laughs> not using his uh, starter. Yeah. Because he could have got to the carrot. Then he could have stopped the Lightning Storm from resolving. And I think this game would have been completely different. Yeah, it would have been different. Because uh, the Gene Buster would have negated. Uh, he would have had another negation with Red. Uh, Flashing fight. I think the game was yeah. over on the spot, but instead he kept it, uh, tried to play uh, maybe a little too flashy <laughs> for the uh, cameras, but uh, this time he's getting punished by it. Also, because now the Guardian stops any possible, you know, Nibiru. It will be interesting to understand maybe why I was most scared of uh, Dark Lure rather than the uh, Lightning Storm, mm -hmm. which we have seen more players uh, still siding. Uh, yeah. Here we see the Coral Dragon. Again, one of the <laughs> older cards uh, gets to draw a card. Let's see. Yeah, solid, uh, solid stuff. Uh, I think you. Uh, it's really surprising to me, not that he's uh, doing really well, but that he's this comfortable, you know, because you are on run one, uh, one of the biggest YCSs ever held up against the previous champion and he's just crashing it yeah yeah i mean uh, we, we just saw in game one basically that uh, the small misplay you know with the yeah uh, small with the world being activated but course. still but still it didn't matter yeah <laughs> it's basically just uh, absolutely flexing on uh, ryan and saying yeah i don't need the small world but yeah here we get to see again the top five uh, unfortunately a whiff but yeah, uh, he will uh, just uh, put all of the cards back. Okay, and interesting, we see the carrot. I think Ryan is getting really worried here. No, things are getting very complicated for him. Uh, he really needs to have uh, some sort of interruption. Yeah. Or uh, we, we are seeing... Uh, and as more time passes by, there is a huge crowd formed uh, in front of our players already done with their matches. Uh, and uh, just witnessing uh, Martel deck uh, in action. So. Yeah, now really, if Ryan doesn't have any other uh, you interruptions, know, yeah, yeah, this uh, this could be game over, just like it was in game one. Honestly, uh, I, I, we said it. Even if uh, in the end it is not done with this, he gets to the Baron, but yeah, he cannot oh, summon oh. it. Yeah. Good catch uh, from the French player because he's locked uh, through the gigantic. Uh, Let's see. Maybe got too excited. It uh, still should have uh, plenty. Wow. And he does it. So, wow. Martin takes it 2 and 0. Oh, and he is the winner of round one here in YCS Utrecht. What a match. Uh, let's go back to us. Wow. wow. What a <laughs> way to start things off. Uh, 
we couldn't ask for a better start, to be fair. We picked uh, who the winner of the last YCS Utrecht back in 2020 was, which is, of course, Ryan Jabri, famous player, absolutely astonishing, top 8 finish uh, at the last event in Antwerp, but up against uh, a wall. Wow, I mean, Literal if you're playing, rock uh, wall. If yeah. you're playing Martin, uh, I will be scared now. <laughs> absolutely, I mean, uh, and also because we had uh, two very different games, but yep. the outcome was the same. So essentially, game one, we see an infinite impermanence stopping uh, uh, the Eugene from resolving, and uh, that was Ryan N. So uh, maybe I, I can uh, already feel the skepticism from some of you guys watching, saying, yeah, he won just because his opponent bricked, he started off things really badly, and that's it. Well, game two is quite different, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's basically the opposite because like Ryan started things off very well with his combo with the Ojin going through and then as you mentioned um, I don't think you can ask for more yeah. like he I literally mean, opened with red gene buster elf then he had the, the flashing font. fire yeah, the fountain as well he had the fountain with a two setup because yeah. he had both the flashing yeah. fire and then uh, uh, in the end uh, another um, uh, the of the cards yeah. yeah and also the starter to get the carrot yeah. That's maybe the only interesting uh, part which uh, we could ask him, uh, which is what would have happened uh, if Ryan would have used the starter right away to get the carrot? I think uh, it could have been quite a different game because then by then uh, you stop the Lightning Storm, you have the Gin Buster to stop another of the other Emancipator cards, but in the end, it was just Martin who absolutely crushed it. Uh, he showed off his place, he showed off why it's tough, and we already mentioned it. So he was able to just push through an OTK. But the problem with the Runic Sprite deck is, even if he wouldn't have, the battle phase is lost. How do you deal with an established yeah. board? And this is the strategy for most of these duelists. We mentioned Herman Hansen. It's a completely different deck. He's playing Despia. But even there, you go second, you set up a board that you just disrupt, and then you put up, even if they're useless, just a bunch of 2,500 beaters on the field. Without a battle phase, Runic Sprite How just can you can't deal with deal them. With them. Yeah, exactly. So maybe we'll see if uh, that will be a punishment for our Runic Sprite duelist this weekend, and if my pick wasn't the correct one for once. But regardless, uh, I want to thank you guys for having joined us for this round one. We will be back with more action, but without doing it, let's go back to Ed with Martin, the winner of round one. Fucking amazing, man. I'm like so nervous. Please, please don't swear on the stream. Uh, I'm like so fucking nervous. Please don't swear on the stream. I'm really nervous on like everything I did and say like right now. Like, I'm really hustling my words, but it was really great. He was a nice guy, like overall. So talk to us a little bit about your decks. You're the first Adamancipator one that we've seen so far. Talk to us a bit about the structure of your deck without any more swear words. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's really underrated, I think. Like the level two engine of Seeker, Researcher, it's really great to like get the game going. And it secures a lot of plays. If you have like uh, Researcher in blue, you can go Blue, uh, research are normal, get blue, blue gets the uh, negate, so you're like Nibiru proof if you whiff your mill. But yeah, it's pretty good. It seems like a really versatile deck. Yeah. Like you have so many options, you had loads of extensions, yeah. and actually there were a couple of moments I've been writing down all the plays that were happening. Yeah. Ryan started quite badly in the yeah. first game, so how did you capitalize on that moment where he didn't get fountain off and things? The thing about Wooning, I think, is if you get them off the field spell, it's really easy to just like grind them out and with the dragite bounce and spell trap negate, it's really easy to just clean it up. But at the same time, like banishing my important stuff uh, is also really bad with like the runic card. So I was a little bit nervous, but the banishes was fine every time. There were a couple of moments where we maybe saw some of the nerves shine through yeah. on your end because there were a couple of in perm column errors. So what was happening at those moments and how did you try and calm yourself down and keep your head cool? Well, I really didn't. <laughs> like, it was just nerves and nerves going on. Like normally, I, it's the first time I ever played into in perm column. Uh, so it feels really bad to do it on stage, but it worked in the end. So just shows the deck's power, I guess. 
Absolutely, and hopefully this deck will carry on to carry you yeah. through the rest of YCS yeah. Utrecht. Best of luck, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on your round one win. And don't go anywhere, guys, because we will be right back with our second feature match of YCS Utrecht.